Thank you so much, everyone. It's just always lovely to connect with you. Sheila Robinson Kiss here uh, with the Lift channel. This is a channel that's got it all, guys. Uh, mental health, movement, motivation. We check in, we go on the walks. It's real talk, okay? You know how we like to start out. If you haven't already made your wish, let's just give each other some good energy. Close your eyes. All right, I've made my wish. You guys, regardless of circumstances, don't stop hoping, don't stop wishing, don't stop dreaming because it's going to be your mindset and how you hold your center, how you hold your center that's really going to propel you uh, through this time in life and beyond. So having said that, I'll also say this, if you love what I'm doing, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and share the news of the channel with your friends and family. Today, I want to talk about a couple things. I want to talk about attachment um, styles and attachment issues. I want to talk about addictive uh, personalities. And I want to talk about um, extreme behaviors and keeping that all in check. Uh, listen, I've said this many times on this channel. It's having issues in the area of mental health or any other domain of life, that's not the problem. I mean, we all have stuff we're working on. Uh, the, the, the really problematic aspect comes in when you turn away from that and you just refuse to give it a name, you refuse to work on it, or you go in shame about it, or you go into denial and this is what keeps a great many people, families, even folks having relationships, it keeps them in turmoil because you won't look at the issues head on and create a plan, a program of action for yourself. Um, a conversation I was recently having with a lovely gentleman um, sparked the idea for this video he said, you know, Sheila, I feel like I've literally been hit by a Mack truck. Um, a three-year relationship is ending. It was so, it was so intense. You know, I, I met this woman and she baked, you know, I was put on a pedestal very quickly. Um, it was like, it was a hyper focus on me. It felt um, incredibly exhilarating. Um, certainly, it, it that attention, that focused attention, had filled a void for me that had been missing. Um, and almost as with the same level of just intensity and 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 focus, it's the same way she's exiting. It's like this energy that has come out of nowhere and she's behaving like we haven't spent three years building a life and a home together and she is just off in a new in a new existence uh dealing with a new person it's 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 such a cold and and callous thing that she's doing but what what is shocking me is this the the extremes involved and so you know naturally so he's having a just a difficult time uh understanding what is going on um I'm not going to get into all the particulars but let's just say um I had the opportunity to get more background backdrop information uh firsthand information on this individual and it became very clear to me uh, in, in no short order that number one, um, she had a tremendous amount of, of unresolved attachment issues. Uh, number two, she had a very, what you would call addictive personality and I'll get into that momentarily. And then thirdly, the extreme behavior that he was seeing at the end of the relationship also 
um, mirrored some extreme behavior he saw when the relationship started and inside of the relationship. I want to talk about how a attachment issues and addictive personality, how this can hang together. It's, it's, I don't want to want to look at them separately because I could make volumes of, of videos on each topic, but I'm more looking at the, the, the interplay of, of how these two uh, personality types, the, 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 the blend of that, the attachment along with this um, a, a addictive personality. And when you hear addictive, we generally use that term to, um, to describe how vulnerable someone is to starting to use drugs and alcohol. But we can also, it's, it's not a formal clinical term, if you will. We can also uh, refer to addictive personality in terms of someone who's more vulnerable to becoming um, hyper-focused addicted we can be addicted to relationships we can be addicted to anything uh chocolate uh, a person it's it's just uh that that line of delineation means can can you control it is is there balance in terms of your consumption you know so i i want to be clear that that is how i am uh, using this definition and i'm referring to specifically how someone would zero in on a relationship because of the addictive aspects to his or her personality. So when we talk about, I'm going to jump over to um, attachment and then bring this all full circle momentarily. When we talk about uh, attachment style, you guys, this is uh, from attachment forms in the cradle, okay? It's it's just child early childhood 101 is where attachment forms. When you are a baby and you're crying and uh, your, your diaper is wet and you have a warm, loving um, caretaker or parent attend to you, you guys, that is laying down just very powerful, um, neurological connectors. It's like the, the, the railroad tracks <laughs> of your nervous system start to form very, very early. And when a child develops as a result of very secure attachment, they've been nurtured, they've been cared for, there's a sense of respect and a bond. That literally, that's how their nervous system is wired. Uh, on the flip side, on the flip side, and I'm speaking more in general terms, um, when there has been neglect, when there has been abuse, I, I could not overstate the impact that that has on a child uh, coming of age who becomes a teenager, who becomes an adult, when there are um, high levels of um, neglect, abuse, or even if a child was tended to, but there was, say there was a lot of screaming um, in the household, this child was always on edge, um, or say that a parent or a caregiver inappropriately attached to a child, um, creating high levels of um, dependency, not fostering any levels of independence. Um, all of this has everything to do with how a child who's going to become an adult sees the world, sees relationships, how a child moves into the world. So there are a number of different attachment styles um, that we could go into, but I want to stick with um, an example, uh, example in particular. I want you to just imagine... Um, the child who was really early on um, neglected, um, not tended to, uh, at the same time forced early to, into taking care of him or herself. Uh, this may likely, not all the time, but likely create a, a very deep, intense longing for that connection and for that affiliation. But at the same time, there's also been an innate distrust 
built in because, okay, in my formative years, the people who were supposed to take care of me, love me, didn't do that. So you have two very strong emotions competing. I, I want to be loved. Um, I want to trust, um, but I don't. So you can see already an internal conflict is already there. And then on top of that, overlay that with the addictive characteristics that may be underlying um, impulsive behavior, the mental health issues that were born out of uh, early neglect, um, exposure uh, to certain things too early. So the addictive personality can blend in on a for a variety of reasons, um, more prone to taking risks because there were no natural boundaries um, put in place. So a lot of risk taking. Um, I've seen a lot of people who were neglected early on move very quickly into forms of self-medication that may include drugs and alcohol. It may not. Some people self-medicate with sex. Some people um, self-medicate with gossip, uh, tearing other people down. Some people self-medicate by extreme isolation. So you guys, I'm, again, I'm, I'm talking early issues 101, and if they're not resolved, fast forward, and you end up, <laughs> you can end up with an adult who doesn't have a, a firm handle on boundaries, who can attach um, very quickly, and the attachment can happen so quickly psychologically that there hasn't even been time uh, within the person to determine, is this someone that I want to attach with? So that craving just becomes automatic. So I've worked with a lot of folks who have addictive personalities alongside attachment issues, and it's very easy to end up in circumstances that in the moment, in real time, it seems like a, a good idea. And then months down the road, you literally scratch your head. And it's like, how did this happen? Because that energy of these issues, attachment combined with the addictive personality, it can lead to really extreme behaviors where you're in something and you have no idea what you've gotten into. And so one of the things that I had shared with this gentleman toward his, his healing was to, to really understand that um, this likely happened so fast uh, and you really didn't even get time to process it because what someone will do who's suffering from just unmanaged, unchecked attachment issues, addictive personality, they will come on so, so strong. It's almost as if a person can be made a miniature god um, they will zero in on, um, one or two characteristics. This person is so handsome. Um, this person keeps the most amazing clean house. This person is the, the best cook and, and minor, minor, uh, details that they focus on become a hyper, hyper fixations in order to focus on, to justify focus, focusing on the relationship all the more. So what happens is generally they will quickly put another person on a pedestal, the object of the desire, the addiction, or the attraction. They have put this person so high on a pedestal and it lulls an individual into a very false sense of security. It feels secure, it feels good at first, but it's really born out of a lot of intense fear, I don't want to be by myself. I always have to have something to focus on. And you are that person for this space and time. This is why when the focus turns away from their objects of desire, it's like a hot potato. This can go very hot and cold very, very quickly. And the person who's left behind is often feeling very confused uh, by this. And so I'm here to tell you, as I've said in many other videos, one of the best things you can do for yourself in life, whether you are 
dealing with attachment issues, addictive personality or not, one of your best friends is just stopping, breathing, taking a deep breath and slowing things down. Because as I was talking to this gentleman, he said a couple of times, you know, Sheila, there were other things that I would see. I would see her get, get one friend and she was so hyper-focused. All the attention was on this person and then boom, like overnight, it would blow up and this would happen just over and over again. She would get these intense focus on hobbies and things she was going to do and then just walk away from it. So that's another issue, guys, when when these um, energetic extremes are in the mix, it's a it's a very it can be very erratic. And I want you when that erratic energy presents itself to really, really pay attention, whether you're dealing with that within yourself or you're dealing with that with someone else. I did a video a while back where I was um, talking about my theory of extremes and my theory has proven itself out many, many times over the years. I have a lot of people who will, they'll, they will reach out to me, whether it's an idea for a project or, you know, someone wants some support in the area of mental health and, you know, I got to get in there and fast and furious. I want to get this thing off the ground. So in equal parts, <laughs> based on the level of intensity, uh, it's, it's a sheer bet with, you know, even money is close to a hundred percent as you can get it. That's going to fizzle out very quickly because it's, it's the energy of an extreme and inside of extreme energy, it's difficult to sit, to think things out, to execute in a, in a fluid, meaningful way. So I, you know, I, I just can't stress it enough, whether you're a person dealing, um, with these issues internally or you're dealing with someone who you think falls into this category, the great equalizer is going to be training yourself to pull back and not get so swirled into the energetic exchange and constantly asking yourself, there's some key questions, whether you're a person with attachment or addictive personality, or you're dealing with this issue, you know, two-sided coin, that's how I'm, where I'm coming from with this video, a couple questions you always need to be asking yourself. Number one, does this make sense? Does this make sense inside of the space and time that I want to respect? Does, does, does this make sense? Do the pieces fit together? Another question, how is my pace? How is my pace? Um, another question you want to ask yourself, um, is this, is it fair? Is it reasonable? <laughs> and is my focus based in fear? Is it based in fear, stress, and worry? Or is my focus healthy? And it's based in a true uh, affinity, a true interest. And then I want you to be paying attention um, to how you feel when you emotionally separate yourself uh, from the object of desire. And again, if you're a person who's involved with someone with attachment or addictive personality disorders, I want you to be able to, to, to step back and ask yourself, how, how does this pace really feel to me? Is this reasonable? You know, how much do I know about um, this individual? Does, does it make sense in the grand scheme of things? You know, it never ceases to amaze me that so many of us, we will put more time into shopping for a car, more time into shopping for a house, some of us more time into shopping for a new blouse or sweater than we put into really examining uh, our relationships, the people we choose to partner with, um, how we are holding energy out in the world, what is the kind of energy that we are attracting. So uh, the bottom line, guys, uh, when we're talking about attachment issues, um, addictive personality in the extremes that can come up, we are all responsible uh, for the energy that we're leading with. And again, mental health, nothing to be ashamed of, but it is your due diligence to put the guardrails up 
around your life and around your behavior. And I can tell you guys, people, if you'll pay attention, if you'll just pay attention to flow, will we'll really show you who they are all the time. All we need do is train ourselves into paying attention. And you don't need to give away uh, the whole farm in the first 15 minutes. Just by pacing some things out, asking some key questions, um, a lot of heartache and heartbreak uh, can, can, be, can be prevented. So um, for the person uh, that I was sitting with, it's heartbreaking when people kind of get, get caught up in the swirl, um, but God is and healing, healing is on the way. Uh, I would say that you just have, there's a fair amount of folks out here not being in touch with their mental health issues. They can do a lot of damage, guys. Just, just being out of touch, not healed. If I had it my way, there would just be kind of, we talk about a COVID-19 quarantine. There really needs to be a quarantine for people to just heal before they come back out here in the mix. So take responsibility for yourself, for your life. That's the name of the game. I'll be coming back with some more uh, wonderful content for you shortly. Again, if you like what I'm putting out, please do subscribe. I'll see you soon.